Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Avatar discussion. Uh, this one's going to be my thoughts on the 10 year anniversary of the ending of Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, 10 years ago today, uh, Sozin's Comet, all four parts, uh, aired July 19th, 2008, and I'm recording this video on July 19th, 2018. So yeah, it's been 10 years since ATLA came to an end. And it definitely feels like that. I, I don't think this feels like one of those kind of anniversaries where like I'm like, oh, wow, it, it wasn't that long ago, but it, it really was. No, it, it definitely feels like 10 years ago. Like, a, it feels like a good amount of time has passed. The, the anniversary that to me feels like the craziest one at the moment is that next year will be the five-year anniversary of Korra coming to an end. That's the one that to me feels the craziest. That it's like... Not just like five years since Korra like started. It's in, it's like five years since it ended. Like it, it that's that's to me the crazier one to think about, and um, and I, I think it feels long because um, like I, I'd really say that for me like my involvement with the fandom for ATLA was only more towards the end because I only got the internet here at home in like two thousand and seven. So that was after book one and book two, which I'd watched on TV. But never really knew about the fandom because I'd never really used computers, had the internet before that time. And so when I did get it, suddenly it was discovering that, oh, look, look, online, I can watch the episodes anytime I want. Uh, obviously, I got the DVDs a little late as well. Um, and discovering that people were discussing this show, there were forums on like Nickelodeon and as well as the other fan sites like Avatar Spirit and so on at the time. Um, and it was... It was interesting because my main like involvement in the ATLA fandom is just basically waiting for book three and, and the entire run through book three of just here's some episodes, massive gap, no information, here's some episodes, massive gap, no information, and then boom, last nine episodes of the show, like all in a row basically over the course of like a week and the show is then over. It's like, it's a crazy journey uh, obviously super super hype at the time i remember lots of little things that like people were avoiding spoilers because nick had released a kind of you know, one of those young reader books that happened to cover the events of sozin's comet i think they released it um earlier than they were meant to so those spoilers were around and people were avoiding them um you obviously had within the fandom you still had some of the you know shipping war type stuff, Z Zutara, Katang, going on, so that obviously, seeing that sort of in a way, come to a conclusion in a way, with the finale was, was an interesting thing, but definitely the the night the finale aired was, is one I, I, I remember fairly well, I don't remember every detail of it, but I specifically remember that just because I am from Ireland, I had to obviously watch it online, and obviously... 10 years ago stuff doesn't happen as quickly so you can't expect the episodes to basically be online within like 10 minutes of the air uh, the stuff ending so basically i'm waiting for like the usual uploaders who like i think would put it up on youtube expecting them to get taken down within a couple of hours and me just refreshing youtube over and over again like like probably like an hour after I know the episode has ended in America I'm avoiding spoilers from all all over the place just waiting to watch the episodes myself and just waiting for those small chunks of the episode to go up on YouTube here's seven minutes here's the next six minutes seven minutes oh we're through the first episode into the second one and just this very kind of stop start way of viewing the finale in like this this chunk form but still it being such an exciting thing because this is the show that I'm so into I'm so in a way just like emotional about this because at the time obviously we didn't know there was going to be a continuation at some point later on we didn't know Korra was going to be a thing a couple of years down the road uh, that there were going to be comics and all this sort of stuff this was the the ending of Avatar, and it was a really big thing because, especially in book three, the excitement levels for, especially leading into the finale, were just insane uh, with how invested people were in the show. And 
to me, like, there's only three shows where I've kind of really had that sort of a reaction to the show coming to an end, and it's, it's Avatar, it's Korra with the finale, and it's also Lost. I, I, I specifically remember with Lost staying up late to watch that the finale of Lost when it first aired, um, and it, it, that's the, been the experience with, you know, both Avatar shows as well. And obviously, to some degree, I remember much more about the, the, the chorus stuff because I, just because I was so much more involved in the fandom, running a fan site myself, doing YouTube at the time and so on. Um, of course, I remember more about that. Whereas with Avatar, it's always like, I'd only fairly recently had the internet, didn't fully know everything, the ins and outs of fandoms and how they worked and so on. I think at the time, I was mainly discussing stuff with people on like a little kind of chat box thing. One of the sites where I'd like watch the episodes of Avatar, uh, they also they had that chat box and I just discussed stuff there. Everyone would just find information from anywhere on the internet about like what's happening with book three and it would be discussed there. Because I probably told this story much earlier on in my channel that like basically until Avatar The Last Airbender Online I never really found like a fan site that I particularly like that had the kind of atmosphere that I really wanted to discuss Avatar and so um, I sort of pretty much stayed away and was just on these kind of more kind of scattered stuff at the time and um, obviously I check out what like the the main sites were saying about like the episodes as they aired and the finale and stuff like that because especially because social media wasn't as big of a thing at the at the time I, I, at least I didn't have any at that point and um, so I didn't really know if it was being discussed on there and it was definitely a much more of a time of fan sites where they were like the be all end all of like discussion around one specific show and um, so that was definitely like it, in the aftermath of the finale I think that probably the, the thing I remember the most was definitely the the last stages of the full-on I suppose you know shipping wars between Katang and Zutara of just those last couple of arguments as people had to accept that Katara and Aang is the endgame couple and Zuko and Katara is not going to be the canon thing. And it just being that discussion of like, I suppose the difference between the people with Zutara who really wanted it to happen versus the people who were just fine with accepting that, look, they like the interaction of these two characters and they maybe wished it would have been canon, but they can still enjoy just the discussion around like, you know, what ifs kind of those type of things as a sort of non-canon type ship. Um, that's probably one of the main things I remember. Plus, I think in the aftermath, eventually, like the website, I think, was updated on nick.com with some information about Azula. That's where we got the whole, she's in a mental institution in the aftermath of the finale came from. Um, then there's all the stuff like, you know, the, the, there was discussions like at the time, of course, like, where's my mother like the, ending the show on like one that being one of the last notes of like wait wait is there something and now we look back on that and we sort of know that like okay we have the story through the search comic but at the time like it was kind of planned to be like a tv movie but it never really happened nick didn't really go for that idea and so it took until the comic started and the second comic the search for them to eventually get around to telling that story but um, it goes to show that like even back then with Avatar at the, the heights of its power we still had problems with Nick at the time with stuff like books being released too early the terrible scheduling stuff and you know it's similar story with Korra like scheduling all over the place um, stuff going the show being switched to online taken off air and so on um, but yeah, just with regards to, I suppose, remembering watching it for the first time 10 years ago. Um, I just remember kind of staying up really, really late. It's, it's probably one of the first times I'd actually, like, done, like, close to an all-nighter, just staying up to, like, watch something like that. I think I probably only got to, like, actually sleep at, like, 4 or 5 in the morning or something like that. And then when I woke up, I just immediately went to the sites who now had the full episodes up to just watch it, I suppose, normally for the first time and, like, reflect, you know, go over, watch in a more sort of calm way what actually happened and, you know, get into the discussions, I suppose, now that the show was over. And just, I suppose, having to accept as well in the aftermath that, whoa, the show is over and there's nothing else planned at the moment, so. 
uh, that's that's the the main memories of the time and and I suppose reflecting on it now ten years on it's um it's weird because I, I almost don't feel like it's it's that big of a deal the ten year anniversary just because like the franchise is still it still exists like we've had Korra come out in the meantime the last Airbender movie is a thing so many people know about and still remember Avatar fondly and Korra so many people read the comics that are still continuing and there's still new content coming out it is just unfortunate that in the 10 year anniversary year it's been one of the most like disorganized kind of bad communication years for Avatar comics and like new content really coming out and it kind of feels a little bit like wow like are you trying to kill the fandom which already is in a like low spot with you not releasing which content are you actually trying to make things worse with the way you're doing the content but the fact is that there is still new content coming out we're waiting for turf wars part three the the ending of the first core comic we've got a brand new creative team on avatar comics for imbalance and i assume the plan is to continue core comics to do more avatar comics because there are some big stories to be told. They told us the Zuko's mom story in the comics already. At some point they're going to have to tell Azula's story. And really move her plot on. Her, her arc as a character on. And eventually I suppose. Really fill in more of the gaps between Avatar and Korra. And then with the Korra comics. Potentially really move us on. Lead us into this new era. And like do some big world build, building stuff in the aftermath of Korra so that's kind of the way I kind of really feel about this and that I I don't really have the time today nor do I really feel like I need to watch the finale again because because like it's still an active fandom like I, I, I every so often just go back and re-watch some of the episodes I've I've probably seen ATLA straight through like 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 somewhere between like 12 and 15 times I, I haven't kept count but it's it's something like that I've definitely seen every episode of Avatar at least you know yeah probably at least 15 times each and there's probably some that there's less some that I've actually watched more but it, it's it's on that level and um, where I I just did the rewatch over the last year basically doing Avatar and doing Korra again so Selden's Comet is, is in my mind. I don't forget what happened in it. It's such a key part of the show. How could I how could I forget as someone who still covers the content? So um it's weird because like at least right now when I'm recording this video on, on July nineteenth, there there hasn't been any like announcement of anything new happening yet and nor do I think we really expect anything. This year I think the only thing in any way you would say has been a like special thing for the 10 year anniversary is that the Avatar Blu-ray came out this this year which is a really cool release and I assume the timing is is probably to some degree because of the the landmark of the the 10 year anniversary even though it doesn't say it anywhere on it nor is there any new content to go with it the timing is somewhat notable that that, that it did happen this year um like I I think the thing is that like what what would any announcement be? It probably would be about the comics. I, like I wasn't expecting some new show announcement, and I don't think anyone should be because if you keep up with the franchise in the aftermath of Core, you know that the reason that there's no new Avatar show on the horizon is because the creators are taking a break from animation. Mike is writing a series of novels. I think two of them, two out of the three, are already out. Brian is doing his own graphic novel series, um, Thread Worlds. He still hasn't released the first one, even though it was announced like four years ago. Don't really know the details on it. I think it's meant to be out like late this year or early next year. I can't remember the details on it. Um, but once he gets that going, hopefully they'll be released a little bit more quickly. But the main thing is that like in terms of a big new show, like we're not really expecting anything in the next couple of years we have to get through the creators other projects before they probably come back but on that side of things i think we're getting to an area of time where like there probably is a little bit of hope that once they do feel like they maybe want to do another show 
there potentially is a, an opportunity that the, the landscape of animation, that there's an opportunity to do an Avatar show and it work a bit better without Nickelodeon playing as, as bad of a role as they played on ATLA to some degree, Core to some degree, in that I think Nick in the last couple of months have said something along the lines of that, you know, they are willing to have like shows come out on Netflix that are like related to them, like with their properties, but are being released through Netflix. And I think that's where shows like Avatar should be. In in a way, Avatar doesn't really fit the Netflix, the the Nickelodeon like TV station and, and what they want to do with that because you know it, it's difficult to re-air the show because it's so plot focused. Whereas if you just have it on the on Netflix, the whole show is right there. People can watch it whenever they want. That to me feels like in a way what Nickelodeon realized, although the timing was kind of weird about the fact that they just suddenly shifted it, but they realized that the show would, in a way, do better online, that it would get more attention by being released on the internet first rather than on TV, in that before the real proper shift from, like, I think the cord cutting was obviously a thing at the time, at the end of Korra, but not as big as it probably is now, um, it kind of was this kind of step of like, look, it's hard to not view this as a negative thing for the show, but in a way, it's it's doing what it needs to do, that it is going to do better, and it did. Like, it got insane views online for Nick. It just, them doing it in the middle of the season made it look really, really, really bad. But I think that means if Mike and Brian ever come back and want to do another show, doing it this way, the Netflix style, where they can release it Voltron style they can have I suppose a little bit more freedom with things that way because they don't have to constantly be like it has to air this way on the network on the network and, and so on Nick of course will be involved but I assume because it's not all about going on the Nickelodeon channel there'd be a little bit more opportunity freedom to do things obviously none of this is confirmed in any way this is pure speculation but it looks like things could sort of be better because look at some of the shows that are coming out um, on Netflix and, and what they're doing. Like I think Voltron being the main example, we're going to get announced to, to tomorrow or Saturday, um, or is it Sunday? And I think it's Saturday. Uh, what the Dragon Prince show is from Arini has those type of shows where if they were on like a Cartoon Network and stuff like that, just look at the way Steven Universe is being treated at the moment. It currently is more of a kind of plot you have to keep track of the character progression across the last couple of episodes and they're still splitting up episodes months between batches of episodes it's kind of clear that it kind of doesn't work as well with it being on a tv channel whereas netflix kind of works for more of those kind of continuity driven shows if you can't maintain the the, the release schedules like that for tv um so I think there's some hope for the future. Obviously, I don't really expect a new show announcement in the next, like, two, three, four years. I think probably, like, five years from now is probably, like, the earliest that we're in any way looking at, like, any sort of a new show. But that's purely speculation. I think for now, we have to focus on the comics, and I think we have to focus a bit harder on the comics, that we really have to kind of be like, look, we like these comics, we want more of these comics, we want these comics to cover more important things and to get the fandom really behind the comics you have to have the content that they tell feel important it happened with the search the rift to a degree the promise actually to a degree as well as the first comic but more recently it hasn't hit as hard like the core sami stuff from turf wars yes the rest of turf wars no most of north and south not really um and that's where they need to realize that the comics can do big things. You can actually tell those big stories in the comics and they'll work. And in a way, their kind of um, lack of ambition in a way with some of the stories is has been the reason why maybe the excitement level's gone down. Tell exciting stories and people will, will, will read them. And if any of you, if anyone out there is watching this and hasn't read the comics and is kind of having this kind of nostalgia trip of like... Um, discovering Avatar again by finding out about this anniversary. 
absolutely check out the comics. Like, I don't want to give you this, like, glowing review of them right now if you've never actually read any of them before. But just, I think they're good comics. I think they add on to the show really, really well. And the second comic, The Search, is, like, essential reading. But I think they're all worth reading. Um, so I think the more people who discover the comics, the better, and so on. So... I think that's most of what I want to talk about today. I just wanted to put out some video talking about this um, anniversary to just kind of reflect on the past as well as kind of things going forward. It's it's a bit of a weird kind of reaction today for me just because I do very much view Avatar as a kind of still ongoing franchise that is still active to a degree. So some of the like opinions, discussions that I've seen of like very much that like, oh, Avatar ended 10 years ago today and that's just it. And it's like, no, it's, it, it kind of hasn't really left since then. Like, it's still there, not as big as it was during while well, Core was on the air, while Avatar was on the air, but it's still, you know, active. There's still people who care about news that comes out week to week and so on. Um, and it, I, I feel like it could be much more exciting in the fandom uh, now even without a show on the horizon. And it's all about Dark Horse, the comics, them writing better comics to get people invested. So, um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the Sozin's Comet uh, finale anniversary for 10 years. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. What are your thoughts on this big landmark for the show? What do you remember about watching the show for the, the finale for the first time? I suppose if you were in any way involved in the fandom watching the show when it originally aired um, and just you know, what are your thoughts on what I had to say here but yeah that's been the video thanks for watching and bye